بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له شد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family, his companions that stood with him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, what's your Achilles heel? What's your weakness? What is it that gets you down and what is it that makes you question everything around you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran as a matter of fact that we would be tested. That every person would be tested in some capacity. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described the life of man as this line across a box and he, he drew this box or this rectangle with the line extending outside the rectangle and he said that this is the lifespan of man referring to the line and he said this rectangle or this box is his is is the actual i'm sorry he said this is the uh the hopes of man and he said this box or this rectangle is his lifespan, meaning his hopes in life always extend past the actual date of his death, how much time will actually be allotted to him. No matter who you are or what age you pass away, you'll always feel like there's something that was left on the table and you have hopes that extend, طول amal, hopes that extend beyond your allotted lifespan. So this is man's lifespan and these are, or this, these are his hopes and this is his lifespan and then he drew a bunch of small lines around, the li around a person. And he said that these are a'rad. These are tests. They're hindrances. He referred to tests, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this particular hadith as hindrances. These are things that would hinder you. One of them snatches you, the other one misses you. Meaning there are some people that are not tested in their health but they're tested with their family. And there are some people that are not tested with their family, but they're tested with their health. And there are some people that are not tested with their family or their health, but they're tested with their careers and with their wealth. And there are some people that are tested not with their wealth or with their health or with their family, but they're tested with their reputation. And there are some people that are not tested with those things, but they're tested with their religion. The point is, is that every person has a unique set of tests that they are going to go through in life. And many times when you see other people going through tests or the, you know, that, that are of the nature that you feel confident in overcoming. So maybe Allah is testing someone else 
in a way that you feel like you would be able to overcome the nature of that test. Maybe your weakness is different from that person's weakness, but we all do have a certain weakness. And at some point, when we're put to the test, suddenly these things that are concepts and theories and principles that we often preach about and we talk about, suddenly these things come into play. And at that point, it's not about the text. It's about how much you've absorbed of the text. It becomes purely experiential at that point. The other night in my message, I was speaking about you know, this concept of a man who probably has never, who, does, who doesn't read anything about charity or does not know all of the ayat and ahadith about charity. But they are naturally generous people. They already have the quality, they've experienced the quality of generosity. And so when they're put in a situation, they give and their generosity overtakes them. Even though they don't necessarily know all the technicalities and the concepts or the virtues of that said generosity. There are different people that have different qualities and there are people that are tested with different things and when they are tested, suddenly, suddenly, all of the things that you think that you had down are not as prominent in your character as you would have hoped they would have been. Suddenly, you feel like you're reeling. You thought maybe that you'd be able to handle these types of tests but the test came and your faith struggled. Your faith could not hold you up. You thought that you had patience. You've attended lectures on patience. You've heard khutbas about patience. But then something happens to you and you're not patient. And at the, at the core of that issue is that people tie their faith to so many different things, to so many different circumstances, to so many different people, that when that circumstance changes, or when that person changes, or when that aspect of their life changes, suddenly the faith starts to wither away and disappear. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ Some people worship Allah on an edge. They worship Allah literally at the, you know, on a cliff. If something happens that's good to them or what they deem good, because only Allah truly deems good and bad, but something happens to them that they deem good, then they are grateful. They say, we love this faith. We're good with everything. We're good with our faith. Everything is great. Alhamdulillah. The minute that something bad happens to them, that they deem as such, that they deem bad, then they are literally like a person that's jumping off of the cliff of faith. Suddenly it starts to wither away. How many people do you see that weren't so quote-unquote religious before a devastating health, uh, a tragedy of health or loss of health came to them, some sort of disease or sickness, but then through that disease and through that sickness they found faith and they found that wake-up call and they turned back to faith and they turned back to their Creator. Whereas there are so many people that were quote-unquote religious, but then once they're put in that circumstance, it doesn't hold up. Because the learned is not like the absorbed. And the preached about is not like the experienced. It has to go back to your own fundamental experiences. And the Prophet wasallam, for example, he said, وَمَنْ لَا يَشْكُرْ بِالْقَلِيلِ لَمْ يَشْكُرْ بِالْكَثِيرِ that whoever does not thank Allah for the little things in life is not going to be grateful for the big things in life. Whoever is not patient with the small things that are going to happen to them, how are they going to truly find patience with the major things that happen to them in life? If you can't have patience with someone cutting you off on the side of the road and hold yourself, if you can't have patience in an argument, how are you going to have patience when you're facing a disaster in life? The experienced is not like the learned. The Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ That knowledge is through seeking knowledge and patience and forbearance is through practicing patience and forbearance. You have to constantly make sure that those qualities are, are, are 
well established in your heart, well established in your character, so that when those things come, when those tests come, you know how to deal with them. Your faith actually holds up. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us many du'as in this regard. That it's not just knowledge, but it's actually being, uh, be, you know, making sure that you stick to that knowledge. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you thabat and firmness. So he taught us to say, Allah mahdini wa saddidni. Oh Allah, guide me and keep me firm. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, when he used to read the verse in Surah Hud, the hardest verse ever revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ وَمَنْ تَابَ معك وَلَا تَطْغَوْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so be firm as you've been commanded and those that have turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. And do not turn back on your heels, do not turn away from faith. But the learned is not like the experience. So Imam Hassan al-Basri, every time he would read that verse, he would say, Allahumma anta rabbuna farzuqna al-istiqama. Allahumma anta rabbuna farzuqna al-istiqama. Oh Allah, you are our Lord, so grant us that firmness. The most frequent dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most frequent supplication. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O oh, turner of hearts, keep my heart firm on your path. Your heart is already inconsistent. But then something happens and you have to make sure that it stays consistent enough on faith. And that it doesn't go wild and all over the place. When the Prophet ﷺ passed away, and you talk about a test to the community of the Messenger ﷺ, he was their everything. They saw him every day. They prayed behind him every day. They experienced his beautiful character every single day. And then the Prophet ﷺ passes away. And when some of the, the, the Sahaba heard it, what was the natural emotion that overtook them? Denial. It can't be true. Absolute denial. Because that was the most convenient emotion to, to maintaining the faith. That was how they felt guarded. That's how they felt protected. It was a safety net. So when the Messenger ﷺ passed away and Umar bin Khattab عنه, starts to stand up and threaten the people who say that the Prophet ﷺ passed away and Abu Bakr عنه, is the one who stands up. And who loved the Prophet ﷺ more? Abu Bakr or Umar? Abu Bakr loved the Prophet ﷺ more. But Abu Bakr stands up and he tells Umar to sit down. And he says, Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qadmat. Whoever used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah. And whoever used to worship Allah fa inna Allah hayyun la yamut. Know that Allah is ever living and he does not die. And he read the verse. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was but a messenger. Other messengers have passed before him. If he dies or if he is killed, will you turn back on your heels? Umar radiallahu anhu felt his legs escape him from under him when he heard that verse. And what did he say? Umar, who used to stand up and pray at night, Umar, who loved the Qur'an. What did Umar say? He said, it was as if the, it was the first time I heard that verse. That verse had new meaning to me because I experienced it. Before, when we used to read that verse, that was a far possibility. We didn't think about it. But when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu stood up and recited it in that moment, suddenly... It meant, more, it meant something more to me. Suddenly it hit me, it struck me that even Allah mentions the possibility in the Qur'an or mentions that the Prophet sallallahu that you will die and they too will perish. You perish and they perish, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It hit him there. And his reaction, if you were observing that, his reaction... You might think that maybe he loves the Prophet ﷺ more than Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, but that's just not true. No one else in there loves the Prophet ﷺ after Abu Bakr maybe more than Umar. 
But Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu solidified those concepts in his life. No one loved. The Prophet sallallahu when, when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu thought that he would be in harm's way, he would put his life on the line all the time for the Prophet sallallahu So clearly the life of the messenger was even more important to him than his own life. But he already processed in his mind and internally processed what it will be like when the Prophet ﷺ passes away. He paid attention to the ayat more so than any other human being. He internalized them more so than any other human being. What does this mean for us, dear brothers and sisters? أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ do people think they just say, we believe, and then they're not going to be tested in regards to their faith, in regards to their health, in regards to their wealth, in regards to their families, in regards to everything else. You will be tested. But here's the deal. As believers, we do not put ourselves in positions where our faith is going to be made vulnerable. We don't go seeking out things that will shake our faith. You know, one of the, uh, uh, the men who uh, was, was, on, uh, was being hunted by Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf was Sa'id ibn Jubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Sa'id ibn Jubair was being hunted and Sa'id was, t was told, you know, if you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much because he wasn't scared, he was visibly not shaken by the presence of that tyrant, tyrant why don't you jump off a cliff? He said, Allah tests me, I don't test him. You don't test Allah. You don't ask Allah for hardship. You don't ask Allah to put your health at risk. You don't ask Allah to put your family at risk. You, you ask Allah for the best of this world. You don't seek out fitan. You don't seek out trials and tribulations. And the Prophet ﷺ taught us, for example, when a Masih had Dajjal, when the Antichrist would come to this earth, the Prophet said, don't get excited about yourself and feel like I have confidence, let me go challenge him. Because it's a fitna. It's a test. It's a trial to your faith. You might, you might really, really be convinced that if I'm in front of him, I've got this. But what happens when Al-Masih had Dajjal, when the Antichrist starts to work spells and starts to do things, you might get lost. Don't look for it. Seek refuge in Allah from him. And if you happen to encounter him, you would hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make you from the protected. But the Prophet ﷺ did not tell us to go to those places. When well, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned if there is a land that has a plague in it, don't go to that land. It's not that that's a lack of tawakkud, a lack of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't test Allah. We don't seek out those tests. But we prepare ourselves for the worst of tests. We prepare ourselves for the worst of them. We're always vigilant with our Iman. Always vigilant with our faith. And at some point, each and every single one of us has to take themselves to task and try to identify what those weaknesses are before those weaknesses are exploited. That takes introspection. Before you get put in a situation where those weaknesses are going to be exploited and made vulnerable, you have to take yourself to task. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. And the perfect balance of the Prophet ﷺ's mission is that this understanding of the divine decree of Allah and everything being in his hands did not lead to an escapism on the part of the believers. It didn't lead to the believers escaping from responsibility. It didn't lead to people saying, well, I don't need to really do anything anymore because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of me. It didn't lead to pessimism amongst the companions. Instead, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever amongst you can meet Allah while thinking good of him, expect well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then let him do so it's of the greatest acts of worship but you're prepped you're prepared and the question that we all have to ask ourselves is that if our faith is tied to people 
if our faith is tied to circumstances, if our faith is tied to all of these conditions that we place upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then before those things are shattered, I need to disconnect my faith from those things and connect them directly to Allah. Put it completely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that if those things start to become shaky, my faith would still remain firm. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts firm. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qulubana ala deenik. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O turner of hearts, to keep our hearts firm on his path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those that love him only for him, that turn to him in full sincerity only seeking his pleasure and his forgiveness and his protection. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect our hearts to his revelation, to his divine revelation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if we are tested, that our tests are not in regards to our faith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we are put in situations where we feel vulnerable, that the last of our deeds and the last of our states in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most pleasing to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a good ending, for husn al-khitam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. We ask Allah to have mercy upon us. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah ilu lakum wa risa al muslimin. Astaghfiru inna huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa la'udwana illa ala al-zalameen. Wa la'aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasiman kathira. Dear brothers and sisters, tonight insha'Allah ta'ala we will be covering the biography of Salman al-Farisi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Salman the Persian who is the epitome of perseverance in the face of trials and tests and who overcame every obstacle to find the truth, to connect to the truth only for the sake of the truth. And in that is a lesson for us and we will dissect those lessons inshallah ta'ala together tonight. But, but we start on the basis that when we approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we approach Him only for Him. Of the most, of the most, uh, of the most prominent features of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam going to the cave of Hira, and subhanAllah, I was just getting back from Hajj less than two weeks ago, and I can, over, I can see Hira in front of me. One of the most beautiful things about the Prophet I'm going to that cave and seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he went there when he had everything going well for him in life. Everything was good. Family life was good. Reputation was good. Wealth was good. He had everything that you could possibly want, alayhi salatu was salam. But he went up there, firstly because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him to that, but he knew that there was more to this life than these things. So we connect our faith to him so that when things outside of our control, circumstances arise, our faith is not shaken. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us hidayah, guidance, and thabat, and firmness upon his path, and istiqama so that we do not slip. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب دعوات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخوانا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم انصر إخوانا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة تبسم 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 تبسم
بسام وخلي الهموم وخلي الغموم وخلي الضجاع ولا تبتئس من صروف الزمان ولا تشتكي من طعون البشر